Hello Warriors, I thought that I would check in with you. I've been meaning to do this for absolute weeks, but we've been so poorly. I can't tell you, we had um, COVID uh, for bonfire night, so the 5th of November. Um, and literally as I come off that, we've had this flu virus, so we spent most of Christmas in bed. Um, so every time I've gone to do this, I've been so poorly that the thought of trying to do a cough has been very pleasant. So I hope I get through the next few minutes, um, and just check in with you really. So since the last thing you loads have happened, we've gone this copper colour. So we've had to change your hair. I turned 50. Oh my goodness. Um, so yeah, we've had a few things that gone on. Um, but I just thought I would check in with you really because a few people have reached out to me so I want to say thank you so much because um, I haven't done anything for a while um, but I think really it's just because not much have changed <laughs> and I, I try to be positive and I just don't know what I can do to be positive so today I'm going to try and do that as much as I possibly can um, so the first thing I'm going to say is is that uh, not a lot have really changed on my menopause journey um, as in the symptoms, the symptoms are still there, my anxiety is still terrible, I still deal with this swallowing issue, which I speak to about quite often, um, my, you know, I have terrible migraines still, uh, and yeah, just all the symptoms, the brain fog, the dizziness, the legs, when your legs feel like they're going to go, you walk two steps and you think they're going to go, I have this flickering eye thing, which is scary, so my symptoms really haven't changed, and I spoke to my consultant um, a couple of weeks ago. She just checked in to see how my treatment and things was going. And she said to me, do you feel any better? And the truth of it is, I don't feel any better as in the symptoms are still there. But what is actually better, I think, is the way that I deal with the symptoms. Now, it's taken me seven years to kind of adjust to this. So this is not something that have happened overnight. Um, but I think that the way I react now to the symptoms is slightly better which means that I'm kinder to myself, which is what I've been saying to you ladies for a long time. Um, it's just, you know, we've got to be kind to ourselves, warriors. And I think that that's what I started doing now. I don't know what how it happened, but earlier this year, and about the summer really, which is when I kind of did stop doing these vlogs, because unfortunately, I cannot juggle. I can't juggle. It's pointless me lying to you. I can't. So if I'm concentrated on getting my work into place everything else goes out the window my family life my friends my you know home life it all just goes out the window if I'm um, trying to catch up with my friends and everything else goes out the window if I'm trying to be at home it's just I can't I can't hold all these balls in the air like I used to um you know, I said to you before, I would be working while I'd be cooking the kids' tea and I'd be helping them with their homework and um, running them a bath at the same time and I'd have the hoover out and I'd be juggling all these things and now I can just about do one thing and that's if I remember what I'm doing because quite often I walk into somewhere, I don't even know what I've walked in there for and I have to walk back out. So these are the lovely things that happen to us on the menopause. So what I will say is I think I have finally learned to deal with things a bit better. My office was just, it, everything in my office was becoming just so overwhelming because I, whereas before, I would just go in and power on because of the brain fog and the way these migraines react. If I had a few days where I couldn't work, I would be really down on myself and I just all of a sudden just realised like I just had to stop. So I've had to change all my processes and I've said that to you. Um, I'm very fortunate that I was able to, we were able to move for me to work from home. The purpose, as I, I said to you a long time ago, was for us to move for me to work from home to give my family their life. Um, and I couldn't have worked had I not done that. And the truth of it is, I would have been of one of many middle-aged women who message me and say they've had to give up work because either they're on long-term sick um, or they can't cope with the work or they can't function or they can't drive. You know, the, 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 it, it's so limiting. You know, as I say, this is, is quite life debilitating and, and it's only now that these things are kind of coming out, the more that we're talking about, the more things are coming out. Um, so what I will say is, is that I have personally changed the way that I do things. So 
I've learned now that I've always done lists and I've told you that I got lists on top of lists on top of lists. Now, for me to be productive, I have to, it takes me quite often a long time to get into work when I first get into my office because my head is all anxious and dizzy and, you know, we just don't react the same as we used to. So I've learned for me, I have to do a list the night before because when I finish work the night before, I'm way better than I am any morning. So as long as I kind of do a list of myself when I get into the office, it means that I function. I kind of taught myself to redo things actually earlier this year, which meant that I really got in a great place in my office um, for the first time really since pre-COVID because I don't think COVID's out with anything with delays in paperwork and, you know, people just not in a great place across the board. And um, so it's taken a while for everything to get back. So I feel like I've actually got that in in... Um, the best place it's been for a while, which kind of gives me some peace, which means that um, it just helps a little bit with the levels of my anxiety. The other thing that I think that I've done this year is uh, the way that I do with my migraines. Now, on my 50th birthday, um, the menopause gods decided that I wasn't going to have an easy run. So uh, I had an 18-day run of a period and a 22-day run of migraines. Um, and it was awful, but whereas I think before I would have lots of migraines in a day because I'd start off of the day and I'd have a migraine, that would then give me anxiety, which would make my migraine worse, which would last, make it last longer. I have just really learned now that the thing for me to do is step out of that. Um, don't stress about the migraine that I'm having, because if I don't do that and I keep my cup self calm, it tends to help me ward off other migraines and I use some of the holistic approaches like you know pressing things out etc because of the the way I can only take medication but that have really helped me this year it's helped me um not to just be so not to let it con control me I think I think I got to a place where I think I can't let it control me anymore and I have to control it and I think that have slightly changed me. So even though the symptoms haven't changed, I think the way I deal with the symptoms have slightly changed, which has made my journey a little bit easier. And the other thing that I've done this year, um, you know, now don't get me wrong, I'm going to be really honest and say I had an absolute complete meltdown at an airport in um, Iceland because I thought I wasn't sat next to my husband on a plane because we got our seat numbers um, mixed up on what was booked and honestly I had a complete and utter panic attack so it wasn't all perfect but my husband surprised me with a trip to Iceland for my 50th birthday now um, leading up to it I had a period um, and I had migraines now previously I would have been really having bad anxiety having to go away feeling like that whereas I don't know, like I said, I think because I control him or I just thought I can't let this stop me from doing these things. So I took migraine tablets with me. I was aware of what I needed to do. I was actually taking Easter gel bottles in my day bags when we were going on day trips so I could put Easter gel on me throughout the day because during the times I had migraines, I need to increase my dosage. So I prepared myself for it. And I think as long as I was prepared, um, it means that I can deal with things better and um, I am aware that with the migraines, if I um, try not to let them overcome me, I can get rid of them quicker. And it's just relearning how your body is reacting to the things. The one thing I will say is I still don't do is dry very often. I kind of done 2,000 miles on my MOT this year, which is terrible, really. My poor husband is driving Miss Sammy all the time, but he's amazing and he's... he's um, it's a real good support system for me. Um, but because of the migraines and the the flash and eye thing that I get, um, sometimes my legs go and I feel dizzy. I don't feel safe to drive um, for long periods, to be honest. I have sometimes I have an odd week or 10 days, which are my best during the period of the month. During those times, um, I will... You know, I, I go to the chiropractor um every fortnight and um that's about as far as I go, actually. And if I do a trip to the supermarket, it's a bonus. So I'm still not doing more than that, but I am going to make a 
an effort this year to try and do a bit more, but not that it puts me out because obviously with the anxiety and the migraines and other things, there's a lot going on to balance. So I'm not actually going to put it out there and say that's a definite, but I will try to do a bit better with that. Um, so what I want to say to you today is, apart from Happy New Year, and I hope you all have a wonderful, happy, healthy and prosperous 2023. Um, I just want to say really that if you've been following my vlog, for a number of years you'll see I have been really honest about this process and I've documented times when I've had real bad anxiety uh, and I've been really honest with you because I think that's the only thing we can do so other women don't feel like they're going mad and feel like they're losing their marbles now I'm not whole by any means um you know as I've said to you before it's not my confidence it's not my belief in myself um, you know, I, I'm nowhere near the person I was before, but all of a sudden I've come to grips with it, I think, a bit better. And I do have terrible days, um, you know, and I still have days where I could have six or seven migraines in a day and it'll wipe me out. But I get back on that horse and rip that band-aid off. And I said to you, I think, what I've learned to do since I've been on this journey especially now as it's gone on and I, I'm seven years, I would say now, down the road, um, and still going through it and still having periods, like, really. Um, I think I've just learned to deal with the symptoms a bit better and I think the more that I've kind of tried to control that, the better that I've been in myself. Um, and I just think that's all we can do for the time being. I think that it's absolutely amazing that people are talking about this now. I don't really watch any soaps, but the other day we caught something on Emmerdale, I believe, that they were dealing with the menopause and talking about HRT. So it is really good now that people are coming out and talking about it. Um... And I think it's good for other women that are going through it or going through what I was going through a couple of years ago when I couldn't even function. You know, I documented it. I, In fact, I still couldn't even watch it now. I think that I'm still vulnerable. And until I kind of come out this vulnerable stage, I'm not ready to see how awful I was, even though I know how bad it was. Um, so when I look at where I was there compared to here, the progress is immense. It just doesn't feel like it sometimes because the symptoms are just still ongoing. Um, and the other thing that I will say is I think that there needs to be looked into really for us women is that I think that as the hormones change, the treatment changes. And I think that, unfortunately, I think because of what goes on and, you know, GPs um, are not experienced. You know, this is a prime example. I was invited by my GPs, uh, GP clinic to go um, on a menopause programme. We have a local programme apparently. And because I, I've had all, all these issues, they're aware of it because I'm back for the doctor today. Um, they invited me to go to this clinic. Now, I had a check-in with a nurse pre um, going for this appointment, I still haven't heard anything, and that was maybe two months down, you know, two months ago. Now, I've been getting treatment, and I've been seeing a private consultant, so I'm in a real fortunate position. Now, had I been myself, like I was six, seven years ago, with looking for support, support two months is a long time for us women to be going through that. So I think that things need to be quicker. The other thing I think is as well, is that I think us women need to be more vocal about our treatment and what goes on, because what I have learned is, and this is just on the treatment that I've been on now, um, as I've said to you, if you've been following me, I take eutrogestin, and the um, every day I take the eutrogestin, because I found, um, I think that's when things changed me over the summer, when my consultant suggested that I change the way that I take the treatment, and taking eutrogestin for me means that I'm way more balanced throughout the month, um, it doesn't stop the migraines. I think my anxiety is a bit more leveled out. I still have times where it's, you know, so off the rick that I can't function and I can't change that. Um, but I think the treatment itself is balanced out. But with the Estragel, you're able to adjust that. So 
if I need more, I can add that more to my body. And I think that what happens with the menopause is we lose these hormones. The treatment we need changes. So I, it's just my own experience. But what I find is as fast as the treatment you think, oh, I'm starting to feel okay, you feel a bit rough again. And I just think it's because you get more depleted hormones and you need something more to go in there. So I think part of this with the HRT is the doctors need to be giving us more tests to see what we're needing and lacking to kind of balance those hormones out because it's not a this happens and then it's okay for the next 10 years because your hormones are just continually changing well the treatment will have to change I think and I think that's where all of a sudden that I've leveled out and I feel probably the best um oh gosh touch wood that I felt in in a lot of years you know a lot a lot of years and like I said I'm still not 50% to where I was but I you know I'm getting there and I do more and I make more of an effort and I force myself to do things um you know like I say I face my fears every day with the band-aid off um well I'm so sorry it's been so long and I've done a massive vlog now tonight because I'm spoken to you for a while I will I will I will check in um with you now throughout this year um and I'll keep you updated on how I'm doing and what's been going on and um, anything exciting that's happening. Um, I'll start gardening now because that's the thing that kind of keeps my mind and my anxiety at bay. Um, and I just hope you're all doing well and I hope you're all looking after yourselves and being kind, really. Because as I say, if you can't be kind, you can't be anything else. Um, so I'm sorry it's been so long, Warriors, and I promise I will keep in touch. Uh, Happy New Year and peace out.